All right, my first guest tonight is Mrs. Joan Embry from the San Diego Zoo. Did you know June is the National Zoo and Aquarium Month? I did not know that. Well, take a whale to lunch or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, zoos and aquariums are usually supported not only by the government, but by, by donations by people, and their San Diego Zoo is a remarkable zoo. So would you welcome, please, Mr. Joan Embry. Hey, isn't that cute? That's really nice. Talk to the animals. Kind of fits in with your visit. Sure it's been a does. while. How have you been? Good. Springtime. Lots of new babies at the zoo. Is that when most animals, animals are born? Are... In the spring? In the spring. Most Ooh. of them. Why Not all of them. Why is that? It has to do with the change of weather and the season when the babies are coming in to warmer weather and yeah. have a good chance for survival. Oh. What, what, what's been born at the zoo? Well, the recently? latest arrival is drawing a lot of attention. It is our brand new albino koala. And it's one of only two An in the entire koala? world. Oh, right. Look at that. And uh, her name is Gulara, which well, means me moonlight. And we, we were quite surprised. Fly, As you see, she's she's absolutely she snow white. By a normal phase koala, and the female was the normal gray coloration. And uh, it was noticed that as she emerged from the pouch, which happens at six months, we saw a little pink nose. <laughs> And uh, there is only one other in the world, and it is in Brisbane, Australia, in Lone Pine Sanctuary. Yeah. And so they're very unusual. What was it? Down, back down the line somewhere, there was another albino in the... There were recessive traits in both the yeah. mother and the father, and those traits combined to produce the albinism in her, which means a lack of pigment. Okay. Yeah. And she is totally pink. She has uh, red eyes. And she's sensitive to the sunlight, so she's not on display, but we brought uh, some video to give you a look at this okay. very rare... Watch, watch the monitors here. Um, how, now, how old is this little uh, koala? Well, she's just reaching a here year, but right you here. don't see oh. them until they're almost six months old. See, that's one of those animals that always gets the... Uh, <laughs> certain animals that do that. Exactly, and she's so <laughs> precious. When she's out, you can see with her very pink skin and no uh, melanin in her... Um, coloring that she is susceptible for sunburn so we have to protect her and keep her out of the sun and she is the <laughs> most popular animal in the zoo right now we've received a national attention and you look at one and you think oh isn't that the ideal pet everybody says if I could have anything I would want to They'd want one of those around the house right but you know they really don't make good pets in fact they're quite restricted by the Australian government only can go to approved facilities they sleep most of the day they have very sharp claws, which you see there, and sharp teeth, and they don't like being held at all. Oh, I see. Occasionally, if they're handled Are they know, more of kind of solitary animals? They like to be by themselves? They are solitary, except yeah. during breeding. And uh, they eat about, well, we go through maybe 50 pounds of eucalyptus. Of 500 varieties, they only eat about 12. So yeah, they have right a very there. specialized diet, and they would die in the hands of unqualified people. So the Australian government is very protective of them. That has become kind of a, a, a fad among some people, I guess, all over the world, uh, of, of getting exotic pets. Unfortunately, we're at a point where people think that that is uh, popular to have something that no one else has, yeah. to have something unusual. And so the exotic animals that come into homes as pets frequently do not work out. And we uh, have a lot of problems. People watch me up here and they see young animals. So which are all say, cute and... Oh, no, aren't they cute? And I'd love to have one. And uh, they don't work out well in the home. And most of these animals are carefully chosen. And some of the animals, the majority of them here on the show, yeah. are back in exhibit and cannot be handled at all now. Maybe they could when they were babies. Well, I remember we now. had some tape of the show we show occasionally on our anniversary show. When I think it was a young uh, cheetah was on the show, and it was a baby. And right. it was cuddly, and it was licking my face. Right. Six months later... They it went that, for you. <laughs> that brought that animal back, and it went for me like I was a white hunter. I mean, <laughs> the thing weighed about 100 pounds. And you can be totally prepared <laughs> and think that that's a possibility, but they're so fast and, and so formidable looking that it really puts the fear into you. Yeah. And most people, unfortunately, don't realize till they're in serious trouble that they've acquired something yeah. that they cannot handle. Isn't it also true that, say, say a leopard or a cougar or a cat from a cat family, born in captivity, people think, oh, because it's born in captivity and grows up around people, therefore, it's, one it's of like them. a domestic pet. Not true. They can turn. Not they? true at all. They yeah. do. And unfortunately, they are always wild animals, and they grow up to be wild and have the traits that allowed for their survival in the wild, which make them dangerous in, in a captive state.